Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am Raphael, the Ninja Turtle. And Andy would like me to say that I am Leonardo. She is Leonardo. We're here to talk about BDSM and King. I got these cute little plushies and I wanted to show them off. It took a lot of convincing for Andy to get me to do that. You don't want to do that in the intro. Yeah, you ruined my intro. Let's talk about long distance dom sub or maybe just like BDSM and kink relationships. There's a guy in my coaching group who recently has been talking to women, putting himself out there, and he approached a couple of women, older women. He's a little cougar hunter at airports and in Vegas, and he had a flirt with a couple of different women, went on a short date with them, got phone numbers, exchanged phone numbers, and he was really nervous and wanted to like dirty talk with them, but he had no idea how to do that and was putting all this pressure on himself, so... He did a really good job. I just told him, why don't you just be honest with them? Just say, I would like to talk dirty with you over text. Is that something that you're interested in? And so he literally was autistically honest, sent exactly that message. Hi, I would like to talk dirty with you over text. Would you like to? And both of them are like, that sounds fun. I'd love that. And so now he's in different cities to both of them. Mm -hmm. And they're probably not going to meet each other. I don't know, more than like, you can't predict, but maybe once a year, once every two years or so, twice a year. I don't know. But it's going to be sort of a long distance kinky relationship and he's getting into BDSM. He wants to explore a bit of kink and all of that. And so I thought what a great time to do this video, which we've been thinking about doing for a little while Mm. is how to talk dirty over text, you know, long distance, but also how to carry on if you're interested in it. I guess what you would call like a kink relationship or like a dom sub relationship or like a BDSM relationship. Mm. And I think it's worth giving the caveats of like, if I ask you the question, would you ever carry on a long distance relationship of any kind, but like a kink one? No. <laughs> yeah, neither would I. I'm not really into long distance, like the idea of long distance. Like it's not really something that appeals. Yeah. And so I guess with this podcast, we'll say do whatever you want. But I would think about some caveats if you are going to do a long term relationship. Like if you are, more power to you. This whole video is about how to do that a little bit. But I would lower expectations. A lot of the time when people, feel pain or suffering or any of that in a long distance relationship it's because they had expectations Mm -hmm. and they're like but we love each other love will conquer all and so the other person has to move to be with me or i have to move to be with them and it's like sometimes you're just on divergent life paths you're just going in different directions one of you wants to be in some city being a fucking high profile lawyer or something the other one of you wants to live on the beach and be a little hippie like you're just going in different directions And so I think if you were going to do a long distance relationship, particularly one that might have some power dynamics in it, like if you're going to do a bit of dom sub stuff or a bit of kink or a bit of BDSM, there is sort of a tendency sometimes to get a little bit attached in long term, long distance relationships. So I'd be careful with that. I'd try and do it maybe with no expectations and no pressure that it has to build into something and just sort of take it as it comes. And if at some point one of you is like, I don't think this is working anymore. I think I have too many expectations or whatever. You're allowed to deal with that. You're allowed to break up. So yeah, I would only do this if this is something that you're both happy with. You know, for me, same as you, I wouldn't. Mm. For you, is it that you just want physical touch? Like, why would you not do a long distance one? I think in my mind, one, I hate texting. Like the the idea of like having a relationship that exists purely like over and obviously you can call and things like that, but like that one doesn't appeal to me yeah, at all. And two, like it doesn't really feel like a relationship in my mind. Like it feels like you don't get a lot of the good things of a relationship, like time together, experiences together, intimacy, like talking to somebody like that's in front of you. I don't know. It just, it doesn't, it really doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. And I guess with, like, our experience level with all of this, like, it's not as if we've been, like, long-term dating in long-distance relationships, but I guess the you've worked with clients who've maybe tried to work at some of this stuff or, like you I, said. I've had a lot of clients that have gone long-distance for years sometimes, yeah. Yeah, and maybe another good example is the girl we've been seeing for almost two years now, Bronwyn. She's not long-distance, but she lives about an hour away. And so it means that she's often the one that's travelling to see us and – Because there is that distance, we're probably only seeing her once every two weeks, maybe once a week. And so there is a bit of chatting throughout the week and maybe some sexual elements as well to keep that going in between meetings. Yeah, it's almost like elements of it. I think we're doing elements of a long distance relationship just with meeting each other every couple of weeks. And Mm -hmm. 
maybe that's what will happen with my client. He does do a little bit of traveling. And so he could travel to meet these women, you know, once every few months or so. So yeah, at the end of the day, I guess what we're saying here is do whatever you want to do. Like I would ask yourself, am I happy doing this long distance thing? Can I do it with no expectations? Can I do it with no attachment? Can I let go of my disappointment if we don't end up being together or something? Can I just enjoy it for what it actually is? Like a lot of people, this is just a general thing in relationships. People get themselves very upset. They don't mean to, Mm -hmm. but they get very upset because they had expectations and then they become disappointed. And if you're able to let go of those expectations and just say, I'm going to live in the moment right now, which can be easier said than done, but enjoy the relationship for what it is right now, not what I'm expecting it to be in the future. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean don't have goals, don't make progress, don't build something. But again, if you don't have expectations, you can't be disappointed. You were only ever hurt and disappointed because you got really attached and you thought, I need this. I need this person to come and meet me. So instead of saying, I need them to come and meet me, you could change that and say, hey, I'm going to do whatever I can to have them meet me or me meet them. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. I did my best. So you still try just as hard, but if it doesn't work out the way that you want it to, you go, that's okay. So I think Maybe that's enough caveats. Any extra caveats before no, we No, it's actually... been a very long intro. <laughs> yeah, there's your like fucking six minutes of caveats with long distance relationships. I think you all get what we're saying, you know. You will. You don't have to hurt yourself with a long distance relationship. Now, how would you actually start doing it? Like what advice have I given this coaching client of mine of how to do a sort of kinky relationship, maybe with a bit of BDSM or dom some stuff? I think one of the first things that you can do is obviously a little bit of flirting and stuff like that. But I told him like, just jump straight into the sexual bucket list thing. Like he's already flirted with them a little bit. He's working on that stuff. They're having fun with that. They're both exploring. You know, he's talking to two different women at the same time and they know about each other or they know that he's talking to multiple women. But I said, jump straight into a bucket list. So what you will say to the other person is, you know, I'm curious to hear what kinks you're into or what sort of things you've always wanted to try in the bedroom. You know, here's some of my things. And then you write down a couple of your things. And if you're shy, which he is, he's not super experienced, you can start with just baby steps. Like you don't have to be like write a list of a hundred different kinks that you have and jump straight into the really kinky stuff. Like I want you to pee on my head while you tell me that I'm a bad boy. Like maybe that's a little bit too much, but you can take baby steps towards it. So you start with like, oh, I've always wanted to have a woman lick my ears. And she's like, oh, that's naughty. I've always wanted to have a man spank my bottom. Oh no. Oh, you're such a naughty, naughty girl. And then you slowly escalate. You just go back and forth sharing some kinks. Yeah, I think the nature, and we touched on it before, of like what the like the relationship will actually look like is, you know, primarily texting. It can be calling, video calling, voice messages, sending photos, sending videos. Hmm. And I guess when we're adding like the extra element of adding kink or BDSM into it, like there can almost be like a routine that you have. Like I know that that's a very common trait, or even something that's not long distance, but like having like rules for the day, like you need to send a selfie of yourself like every yeah, day. Yeah, every morning send a naughty picture of yourself so I can see how much of a good girl you are for me or a yeah. good boy for me. Yeah. Or like I want you to touch yourself for like five minutes when you wake yeah. up in the yeah. morning and yeah. then like send me a text to let me know you've done, like things like that, like having those rules. And they can be like fun ways to explore the like the dominant submissive energy while still having that distance, like following that routine and like mm. being submissive and following rules almost while having that distance and it can be something that doesn't require obviously somebody to be there like you can have that just to check in via text via voice message by a photo whatever it might be yeah you're basically doing fun little homework tasks and we've done a lot of videos about this and we've actually done uh like i said a couple of videos on the channel if you just search for homework there's like sex homework for your girl and then sex homework bdsm homework tasks so that's something that you can do that's basically what you're talking about here Mm -hmm. give each other or if you're in the dominant role give the person who's a little bit more submissive some fun little homework tasks. It could even be naughty things like, all right, every or this week, I want you to go and take a photo, but it has to be a specific type of photo. Like I want you to show me your genitals or I want you to play with yourself for five minutes. So, you know, if you're a guy, so you're nice and hard or if you're a woman, so you're nice and wet and then show that off for me. Or I would like when you're at work, sneak into the bathrooms, make sure no one can see you. You go into a cubicle and take a little selfie, a naughty little selfie of you showing off your body at work and, oh, you're so naughty. What a naughty girl or a naughty boy. Mm -hmm. So you give fun little homework tasks and stuff like that. But I like what you talked about before when you said like you can also have phone calls. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of this stuff is you basically, like if you're going to do a long distance relationship of any kind, 
but especially a BDSM and kink one, you're basically doing similar stuff to what you would do in person, but finding ways to get creative and do that mm. with the distance. So photos, videos, all of that. We live in the age of communication, so that's a lot easier. But something that one of my clients did is he would just say to women, like on dating app, he'd get their phone number from a dating app and then he'd message them and he would basically say, I want to exchange orgasms with you. Like I'd love to have phone sex with you and play around a little bit. And he wasn't long distance with these women. They were women in his city and he'd do this before he met up with them to make sure there was some sexual chemistry there. But you can do exactly the same thing. You can have phone sex with people and say, you know, let's jump on the phone. Let's talk a bit dirty. You play with yourself and I'll play with myself. And we both talk about what we're doing and how it feels. So you're doing the exact same things that you would do like in person. Mm. You're just doing it long distance. Yeah. And when we're doing like, or when we're talking about the kink aspects and like having the submissive or dominant elements, I think like video calls are probably, or just even phone calls are a really good way to do that stuff. It's like, it's almost like for the submissive person, you are dominating yourself under the direction of the Yeah, you're being told what to do and you're following instructions. You can even say, I want you to be a good girl or a good boy and obey me. You know, that can be fun. Yeah. And so like for just an example, like on a video call, it might be that you're like masturbating or playing with yourself and you can still like choke yourself or spank yourself mm. lightly or pinch your nipples or like deny yourself an orgasm. And that can all be like over call, like directed by the dominant. And depending on what you're into, what kinks you like, you can for a lot of the time, like execute them yourself under the direction of mm. a dominant, like execute them yourself on yourself. And, like, there's even, like, if you look into Shibari, like, there are self-tie tutorials. Yeah, you can tie your own ropes on your body, yeah. You can restrain yourself a little bit, put a collar and leash on yourself. Like, there's definitely lots of options, and it really just depends what you're into and things that you would like to explore and try. And you're going to be, I, I know exactly, ready, watch, you're going to make an exact expression when I say this word. You can make your sub goon themselves. You fucking hate that mm. word. I don't know why you hate that word. Because you like gooning. You just fucking hate that word. Lots of people cringe when they hear the word goon. It's a funny little word. But if you don't know what gooning is, it's where you basically play with yourself or you masturbate. You get yourself really horny. And so you can give that task to your sub. We've done that with mm. Bronwyn, you know, the girl that we're dating. Lots of times when she's coming to meet us, because again, it's almost like a long distance relationship. We only see her every couple of weeks. And so we're doing a lot of the same aspects that we're talking about here. And I will say, I want you to edge yourself, get yourself really close to orgasm, but you're not allowed to orgasm. Mm -hmm. Or just play with yourself gently for the, you know, with a toy or your fingers for the next couple of days leading up to seeing us. And so you could basically do the same thing with your sub. You could say, I want you to play with yourself for the next week and you're not allowed to orgasm. So orgasm denial, you know, almost like you're doing no nut November. And then so you say, no orgasm. But get yourself really close. And every time you get close, you have to send me a message. You can masturbate whenever you want, like do whatever you want. But over the next 14 days, I want you to bring yourself to close to the edge lots of times. And every time you do, just send me a quick message. I got so close. Can I please come? No, not yet. You have to earn it. So that can be a really fun thing. It's like that fun little power dynamic. It's like you're both sharing in something because you have the long distance. Again, we're trying to overcome that long distance to some degree. And every time your sub is playing with themselves, they feel close to you because they're thinking of you. They're like my dom or the person in the, you know, with a bit more of the taking the lead power. They said, I can't orgasm. So I have to be good. I have to earn it. I can't do it. It's like you're thinking of each other. It's kind of nice. Yeah. And that can like fall into elements of either like pleasure or punishment, mm. like the idea of being edged or something like that. Like that can be like a punishment in a way or something that's like a bit more challenging. And that's obviously that's part of the game and part of the fun mm. and part of playing together. But like there can be obviously the aspects of making yourself feel good and the, you know, the other aspects of dominant submission where you're doing something that feels a little bit challenging to ultimately get the pleasure from either pleasing the dom mm. or like getting the payoff of the denial mm. as the sub. Yeah. And some more things that you can do, like tasks that you can give your sub or give each other is body writing. That's something you and I have played around a lot with, and we've done that with girls that we've dated and stuff like that. So you will get a texter, like a marker, find one that's body safe, you know, don't use a permanent marker and then go, why won't it come off? I can't get it off. And you write somewhere on your body, wherever you tell them to, wherever they want to, and you'll write their name or you'll be, you'll write like, you know, master's girl or master's 
mistress's boy or like something like that. Mm -hmm. You could write their name and then you'll take a photo and show it to them. And that's kind of like this nice little thing of like, there's this feeling of intimacy and almost like belonging. Not that someone owns you, but there is that fun play of like being owned during sex. It feels nice. It's like, I'm a good girl for master or I'm a good boy for mistress. Like that can be a really fun thing. Yeah, I think a lot of the pleasure from it comes from that sense of letting go and relinquishing control in some way. Mm. I think another one is you can almost pick clothing or like what someone might be wearing or mm. like getting told like you're not going to wear panties for me today or I want you to wear these ones, the ones that are like really dressed up yeah. or I want you to wear lingerie under your clothes today. Mm. Like I think there's definitely those, like that's definitely another idea as well. And you could go into the purchasing of those clothes. So you could say, you know, I want you to be a good girl for me and go and buy yourself some nice lingerie, lingerie over the next, like, you know, you got 14 days, buy something nice. Mm -hmm. Or you could buy them something yourself and send it in the post if you want to. You know, you don't have to, but you could buy sex toys for them as well or tell them to go to a sex toy shop and buy it. Some people get into more sort of physical play with each other long distance, like cuck holding and cuck queening. So you might say, hey, listen, I can't have sex with you because you're miles away. I want you to go and find someone on Tinder or someone that you're dating or maybe you're seeing someone else already. Go sleep with them and take photos for me or tell me about it or something like that. And that can go both ways. Like both genders can do that. If that's something you're comfortable with, you could do, I guess that's sort of like swinging, isn't it? But yeah, that's something that would be really fun. You and I have done bits and pieces of that, like sort of. There's been times when you see Bronwyn on your own mm. and you've taken videos for me, mm. like I'm not there. Mm. You've gone to see her and you've taken videos of you two like making out or going down on each other. And I fucking love those videos as I'm sure a lot of you could imagine. That's like very, very, very sexy. That isn't something that you want in reverse. Mm -mm. Like you're not interested in me taking photos, but like for me, that's a very big turn on. So obviously only do what you're both comfortable with. Let's make that really, really, really clear. You know, there might be some elements of jealousy and not everyone is into seeing someone that they're dating or talking to sleep with someone else. Like, obviously, some of you just want monogamy. Brilliant. Like, do whatever works for both of you. But that can be a fun thing to play around with. Yeah. And as you just said, like, all of this is figuring out the things that you're already into. Like, basically yeah. imagining what what aspects would you like being in a normal non long distance relationship mm. and then seeing how many of those you can kind of get creative with and turn like keep going with in a long term i'm sorry long distance relationship yeah other things you could play around with is you could say to your partner or your sub every time you masturbate like every time you know the urge comes up you get horny you have to tell me about it or i want you to tell me about it or i want you to call me if the time zones line up or whatever, or I want you to take a video of it. You can basically say like, every time you masturbate, I want to be involved in some way. Mm -hmm. And that can be a really fun, nice way to share some intimacy. It's like, you're never doing it by yourself. And maybe they say the same. You can even have a little session, which a lot of people might not think about this if they're in a BDSM dynamic. If you're the dom, you often just think, oh, I want to see pictures of my sub and that's it. I want to see videos of them and that's it. It can be nice to go both ways. Like sometimes the sub wants to see pictures of you. It's just that they're submissive and maybe they're not going to ask you that. And so you can always say like, would you like some pictures of me? You and I have done that from time to time quite a lot. Mm. You know, even in a non-sexual context, every time you and I are apart, we'll take selfies for each other, like just of the face, like, or we're outside and we'll take a photo. We're at the beach, so we'll take a photo of the beach or we're with our friends, we'll take a selfie. So you can go both ways with the pictures and the videos. And that's something like, I think as a dominant, you often it's very easy to be like, I'm going to get everything I want from my sub. But you often sometimes forget to go like, wait, do you want anything from me? And they're like, well, I'd love a picture of you masturbating. Like that would be hot. And you're like, oh, I didn't even think of that. So yeah, you can go both ways with that. Yeah. Another option, like talking a little bit about denial, like you can have physical aids in that. So there like are, chastity. yeah. Yep. So chastity cages for men or chastity belts for women. And it's almost, it definitely falls into like the, the bondage and the dominance aspects where, like, you physically can't, like, play with yourself. Obviously, yeah. like, when it is long distance, you're the one that does have the key or can take it off at any time. Like, in whereas if you are not long distance, then sometimes, like, the master or the dom or the mistress, whoever it might be, would probably hold the key. So it would actually be in control of when it comes on and off. Hmm. And so it would take the, 
like aspects of like trust and honesty with all of that. And I think that is the big thing with being long distance is that these things like having these rules or having like these routines each day or following through with like punishment or denial, like it does require obviously honesty and trust. Like that's yeah, 100%, yeah. integral in keeping it fun and keeping the dynamic alive is telling the other person when things happen. But if you are somebody that is engaging in like a long distance kink relationship, you're probably seeking that dynamic and not really wanting to break rules or will be honest if you do, like you are bratty or naughty or, or break rules and want to be punished. Yeah. And so I would just be very honest with all of this stuff and have like multiple conversations where you say like, look, I know we're long distance. And so sometimes I might give you fun little homework tasks and you make sure the other person wants those homework tasks. You just ask like, are you happy to do this task for me? Like, mm-hmm. would you like to do this task for me? Or would you like a different task? And yeah, have conversations and basically just say, look, it's going to require some trust. I can't be there to know if you're actually doing the task. And so if you ever feel like you're busy and you don't have time to do a task that I give you or you don't have time for us to have phone sex or you don't have time to take some videos with me, then that's okay. Just let me know. Like, I'll understand. I know you're living miles away. We have our own separate lives going on. We're very independent we're living very independently because obviously you're miles away. And so just tell me if you ever feel like I don't want to do any tasks this week or I want a bit of space to myself or I I have a lot going on or I'm traveling or this or that, the other. So I would have those conversations multiple times because I think often in, this is just a general thing, in most relationships to begin with, but especially kink or dom sub based relationships, there's often a point where the submissive just doesn't want to do some of what they're doing just temporarily. Like maybe they're busy, they're stressed, they're going through some stuff, their fucking mother just died or something, and they're not feeling particularly submissive or they're not feeling particularly kinky. And it can often, especially as a submissive, be hard to speak up and Mm -hmm. say, is it okay if we don't do any homework tasks for this week? And so if you're in the dominant role, I would just say you go first. Like you preemptively have lots of conversations and say, hey, if you ever don't want to follow some of the rules that we're giving, like these rules aren't at hardcore rules. Mm-hmm. They're fun. Like I want you to do this because it's fun for you and it's fun for me. We're not just doing this so that you can torture yourself and feel shitty. Mm-hmm. And so if you ever have points in time where you don't want to do what we're saying or you want to try something else or you just want to break or you want a bit of space, tell me. Like you as the Dom initiate that conversation. And that's something you and I do a lot with all with each other. Mm. I mean, we don't really have a Dom sub relationship now anyway. Mm. It's more like two peers. During the bedroom, I will dominate you. Yeah. But like even then it still feels like we're peers. Anyway, the point is with other girls that we see, we will have that conversation a lot of times. Like like a thousand times I will say like, if there's anything you don't want to do, just tell me. Mm. If you're ever in a position where you want to say no, but you don't know how to say no, just say, hey, can we slow down for a second? And then we can talk about it. Like, you don't have to do, we don't want you to do anything that you don't want to do. It's not fun if you're not having fun. Yeah. And I think the nature of what we do, especially now, is that a lot of the time, rather than telling women what to do, it's more like, a, would you like to do this for me mm. or do this for us? I never and tell people what to do. Neither do you. Yeah. yeah. Doing it with like a dominant, like sexy energy, mm. but without the like, you have to do this or you're bad. It's more like, yeah. would you like to be a good girl and do this for me? Yeah. Would you like to do this? And then sometimes the answer is no. And you go, okay, beautiful. Like great job having boundaries. Mm. What would you like to do? Mm. And then they'll say, well, can I do this instead? You're like, oh, good girl. Yeah, do that. So mm. yeah, it can go both ways. I feel like that's everything I can think of, but mm. Yeah, there's tons of other things that you can play around with, you know, with long distance dom sub or kink relationships. But again, you're basically just thinking, what would we be doing in person? Mm. And how can we substitute something that will still be fun for both of us and we still get that intimacy? Because you can kind of zoom out a little bit and think of like first principles or the intention of a relationship. Like why does anyone have a relationship, particularly a dom sub one? Because you probably want to be better off You want your partner to be better off. You want some intimacy and connection. You want to connect with another human being. You want a little bit of communication and start to get into their world a little bit and they get into your world. Like these are the things that we're looking for. You basically want to feel better and you want them to feel better. That's why anyone is in any relationship of any kind. Mm. And so you're finding ways to solve those problems or get those things. So if we can't have physical intimacy, how could we have other intimacy? And we didn't even talk about it, but just sharing stuff 
how was your day? Like all of this, we've covered the sexual stuff, mm. but we could also talk a tiny bit about non-sexual stuff. Like you could say, hey, why don't every day, if we want to, we send a selfie of each other. Again, that's what you and I do when we have a distance. What if once a week we have a day together? It could be a Sunday or something. We have a day together and we just call each other on the phone for like an hour. And we talk through almost like a relationship check-in, which is something that you and I do once a week. Mm -hmm. How's the relationship going? Is there anything we like to improve? How's your life going? Is there anything you'd like to improve? How are your goals going? Can I keep you accountable with your goals? How are you making progress in life? You sort of keep each other accountable. And that's a really nice way to connect with each mm -hmm. other once a week. You know, you could, every time you do something interesting, just text your partner and be like, hey, I went to this party and here's a selfie of all of us together. It was amazing. We had a blast. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for including me. So you're finding ways to get that intimacy and that connection and staying current in each other's lives and staying relevant in each other's lives. That can be sexual or non-sexual. I would obviously encourage both if mm. you want to. Yeah, there's still all of the aspects of like a vanilla long distance relationship yeah. in terms of getting that that connection and the the intimacy, the trust, and just mm. like the having the the time together or keeping updated with one another's lives as well. Yeah, and since you're missing out on the sexuality aspect, like the physical sex, mm. you're basically saying, I can't have sex with you, so I need you to have sex with yourself for me. Mm. Or you can't have sex with me, so I will have sex with myself for you. I will jerk off, you will masturbate, like we'll do all that stuff and we'll photo it or video it or just talk about it or share it. If you didn't share it, well, there wouldn't be much of a relationship. You can basically think of it like in, like kind of like this. If you shared nothing with a long distance sexual partner or kink partner, like if you literally shared nothing, like you didn't text each other ever, you didn't share what was happening in your week, you didn't share any sexuality or intimacy, the relationship would fall apart. There wouldn't be a relationship. You just never talk again. You're like, all right, well, I don't know what happened to that person. They never texted me. So that's one extreme. And then- Further along in that spectrum is like, okay, we're texting every day and we're sending dirty pictures and, you know, we have a full-on relationship. We're sharing everything. We have a phone call every single day. Like you can kind of think of it as a spectrum and then mm -hmm. it's up to you where in that spectrum you want to be. But again, if you don't share anything and you're never talking about your life and you're never talking about what you've been up to and you're not sharing any sexuality, then yeah, the relationship will fade away. And that's not a bad thing. Like that's just the consequence of what will happen. And then the other extreme is like talking all the time. So figure out where you want to be on that. Yeah. And you could even say like with a non-long distance relationship, like if you don't catch up or- The speak, same like, principle the same thing applies. Happens. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. But obviously I think it, because there is the distance and the only like connection is like via the internet, hmm. that it probably is a bit easier to like to get busy and have things fall off because you're with not- long distance. Yeah. Right? Because it's- it's requiring more upkeep to keep it alive, I guess. And You're so both going to have to be more intentional about keeping it alive. Yeah. You don't have the benefit of just when you live together or you live close to each other, you just happen to hang out a lot because mm -hmm. you're right there. Of course, I'm going to hang out with you, especially if you live together or something. Mm -hmm. You're just going to see each other every fucking day. Yeah. And so, like, as we said at the start, like getting into something that is long distance does require the intention Mm. and a level of, I guess, commitment to it. Dedication or devotion. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to. Again, at any point in time, if either of you get to a point where you're like, I don't want to do this, which mm. happens a lot of the time in long distance relationship. Yeah, it can take a lot of effort. It doesn't have to be a chore. That doesn't have to be work. I would only say do that if you want to. Some people see relationships as work. How many times do you hear this where you're like, a relationship takes hard work. A relationship is work. It's like, that sounds shit. It takes intention. <laughs> yeah, it takes intention. You don't have to. At any point, you can say, I don't want to be intentional about this relationship anymore. I'm going to leave. Okay, great. Brilliant. Mm. You know? But yeah, if you're going to do a long distance relationship, it definitely, I would say, requires a little bit more effort not work. It doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to be a chore, but a little bit more intentionality, a little bit more effort. Same as if you had a garden and you wanted that garden to be healthy and beautiful, you would water the garden. You water the plants. Same thing with a relationship. It doesn't have to be work, but you're watering your garden. And if at any point you don't want to do that anymore, have a conversation with your partner mm -hmm. and just say, hey, I think I want to go separate ways. Or is there any chance you'd move towards me or I'd move towards you? If that's just not on the cards, obviously don't push someone and make someone do that but if that's just not on the cards hey maybe we break up you know i feel like i want to go be with someone that i can be a bit closer to beautiful that's amazing so yeah good job i guess i want to shout out to my client who sort of prompted all of this like 
he's the reason that we're talking about this. We were always going to talk about this at some point, but he definitely sped that up. Big shout out to him. He's super, he's going to watch this. I'm going to send this to him. Mm. But he's been very, very courageous with, like he's someone that's very inexperienced. He's only had sex with a couple of women. I think maybe only one, maybe two. I don't know. But he's very inexperienced and he's been doing such a ballsy job of just running towards his honesty, embracing sort of the kinkier or sexual side to himself, like learning how to flirt and really flirting is just say what's in your mind. Like if you if you're horny for the other person, you just say I'm horny for you, you're hot. Mm-hmm. Like flirting is just honesty, but he's really been running towards a lot of courage and yeah, like ballsy as hell. He went to Vegas and hit on a couple of women cougars as well. I'd be nervous to do that. Mm-hmm. Especially at his age, he's not that much younger than me. But and then talking, hitting on a woman at an airport, and then telling them that they're sexy, and then getting their phone numbers, and then texting them and saying, "Hey, I'd like to flirt and talk dirty with you." Is that something you're up for? He was so nervous to say that too. He asked us like, "How do I phrase this? What do I say?" And I was like, "Why don't you just tell them the truth, which is that you would like to flirt with them? Would they like that?" And he's like, "Don't I need the perfect way to be smooth and charming?" And like woo them and i was like no bro why don't you just ask them if they want you to woo them and then woo them Hmm. and he was like oh okay Hmm. would you like me to woo you do you want to talk dirty with me and they were both like yes so Hmm. he's a ballsy dude like he's Hmm. absolutely come so far you know who he is you know who i'm talking about yeah and man he's come such a long way like when he he's come to coaching three times now over the last couple of years when he first came to coaching he was a virgin he was so hard on himself he was so unbelievably shy and nervous and had a whole lot of like not depression, but like anxiety, I guess Mm. I would say that. Mm. He's come such a long way now to be able to be in this position where he's talking dirty and maybe he'll explore some of this kinky stuff and maybe a little bit of dominance and submission and giving homework tasks and sharing bucket lists. Man, he's come such a long way. I'm so unbelievably inspired by this guy, like the amount of Mm. courage that he's shown. He's such a nice human being too. You know who he is. Yeah, so shout out to him. But yeah, he's a sweet, sweet, sweet man. And a sexy little boy too. He's very attractive. And when he first came, he was like, I'm not attractive. And it's like, bro, you're hot as fuck. You just don't know it, which is a lot of clients. You're all hot as fuck, okay? All you women and men out there, you're hot as fuck. Go be the best that you want to be. If you'd like any help with this, like this client that we're talking about, you're very welcome to come to the coaching group. We would love to have you there. We have free calls that you can jump on to discuss whether or not the coaching program is right for you. We have payment plans and all of that stuff we got a few people in there right now working on kink and bdsm and Mm -hmm. relationships and stuff like that so we would love to have you as always go out there and crush your goals go out there and crush your fucking goals and hey wait teenage mutant ninja turtles teenage mutant ninja turtles teenage mutant ninja turtles turn us in a half shell turtle power that's the theme song If you've been wanting an amazing, awesome, elite sex life, tons of threesomes, plenty of wild adventures and great memories with awesome people, we would love to help you get there. Here's just a little bit of what our coaching clients have achieved in their time in the program. Renee had a threesome in just his second week of coaching, had a woman write him a love letter, and he went on to have sex with 12 women in just 12 weeks of coaching. Corky had his first threesome, slept with seven amazing women, and made a ton of awesome memories with them. George and Powell both had sex with 10 women each in their 12 weeks, had a bunch of wild adventures along the way. Join me and join them by clicking the coaching link in the description below.